Deathstroke number 11, written and art by Rob Liefeld. Last issue we left off with Slobo going back to his ship and seemingly going to do something. And then he said, soon, Shiba, we will finally be reunited. Deathstroke and the gang also find out that this is a thing going on. So this issue opens up and it's literally just like a recap of the last three issues, or two issues even. It's just like, okay, here's who all of our characters are. The Omegas, we got Zealot, we got me and my issues because I'm not cool anymore. And we're arriving at this ship where Lobo theoretically is. And then like Deathstroke's like, all right, Zealot, take us down. And then they stop everything for four pages for Zealot to specifically say, before I do Deathstroke, let's go over the entire history of Lobo. But not even the entire history of Lobo, just the parts that matter to the characters in the story. And apparently what happened is Lobo had a woman named Sheba, and he didn't care for not nobody, not know how, but his fellow Zarnian Sheba, he was totally in on. And they would capture and enslave homeworlds and sell them to the Citadel. And apparently he captured the homeworlds of the planets of the parents of the Omegas. And Sheba and them were, you know, a team or whatever. But then one day the ship crashed on Earth. Lobo was unconscious. Sheba was not anywhere to be found. Uh, the rest of the parents of the Omegas broke out and just started having families on Earth. And then eventually the government tracked down the kids, which then were taken to shelter, which became the Omegas. Okay, you see, I explained that to you. This book took significantly longer to do it. So anyway, they break into Lobo's ship, but break in is a strong word because the front door is literally wide open. And inside Lobo's like, all right. My ship's in good shape, barely a scratch. uh, I'm powering up via the core of the earth, and then I'm going to blow up this rock. And also, I'm going to go find Sheba on my space hog. And they show he has a motorcycle. So then the gang breaks in, and they're like, okay, let's all span out, see if we can find Lobo, but be careful. But before they can do literally anything, Lobo jumps them. And just an extended fight scene comes in where he just beats the crap out of literally every one of them while saying, like, Ah, finally I get to fight another one of your species again. It's been too long. And he does it, like, four times. So then, at a certain point, that stroke is laying down some hits. And he's like, yes, I can do this. I can beat him. Then Lobo gets some hits in as well. And he's like, ah, I just have to withstand this. I have to tire him out. I know I can endure longer than him. And he lists off the powers of Lobo, which are like super strength, genius level intellect, super senses. But he's like, I can still, he's still mortal or whatever. So he unloads some guns in Lobo's face and then pulls out two thermal detonators, one of which is strong enough to like completely destroy an elephant. So two should be no problem in taking down this guy. And they go off and he's still standing because he has an extreme regenerative factor and pretty much invincibility. And Deathstroke realizes that as Lobo starts beating the ever-loving crap out of Deathstroke, like actually breaking off his mask. And Lobo is telling him, like, hey, you've got nth metal armor on. I'm going to take that from you, and I'm going to sell it for a whole lot. Try not to bleed all over it. And then Deathstroke's like, I should have known that this was my final mission, that this would be my last contract, but at least I'm going out in the blaze of glory. And then we see Lobo still threatening to blow up the planet. I don't think it's very hard to come up with an issue that I feel is truly unnecessary because at the very least you could say character development and yes this one has character development it's saying Lobo has a woman named Shiba the Omegas and where they came from it has its basic stuff that at least gives it purpose to exist But in terms of, like, this plot of, hey, Lobo's going to blow up the planet, we finally tracked him down, it felt like, who cares? That's the biggest thing. There's not a single idea. The planet is going to explode. And I feel there's no stakes in any of this. At all. That's that's not, and art-wise, don't even get me started on that, but... For such a story, and like, 
especially when you have Lobo. Whether you like him or hate him, he does have a certain, like, ability to take any story and just kind of make it something that should be fun and should be like, oh, hey, we're just... This isn't Lobo kooky and crazy sort of thing. Like, it should be a fun action ride. And the first arc of this entire book was. It was just a fun action ride constantly. But I feel like under the Rob Liefeld run, it's like slowed down to the point of like, oh, but we have to care about these things that these people are going through. Like, in the one book that shouldn't be a goddamn who cares about the Omegas and their parents and, oh, they did all this stuff, like... We stopped for that. Just hard, like, not even, oh, we're a character talking to another character that asked about it. No, Zealot just stopped the story and said, here's exactly what happened. Like, that's bad. It's just bad storytelling. I don't know how else to say it. So, no, overall, I'm giving this one a three. I can't justify how, like, it's not good. It's just not a good book. And to come from the first arc, whether you like the action movie sense of it or not, it's undoubtedly a step down from there. So three for this, and as soon as we can just deal with Lobo, the better. Mm-hmm.